Punching shear is a phenomenon in structural engineering which describes the failure of flat slabs due to concentrated loads from, for example, columns. In this video you'll learn what punching shear is and where it happens, the step-by-step -step process of punching shear design and how to verify punching shear of a flat slab. So let's get straight into it. Let's start by clarifying what punching shear is and where it happens. Punching shear is a type of shear failure that occurs close to where a concentrated load is applied to a slab. The failure happens in a circular shape around the concentrated load. The two main situations where punching shear occurs are flat slabs supported by columns. For this example the most critical location for punching shear will be at the center column as this column takes up the most load. The second example where punching shear can occur are pet footings or foundation rafts that support a column. Let's continue with the step-by-step -step process that I followed to design for punching shear. First, I define geometry properties of the slab and column. Second, we calculate characteristic and then design loads that act on the column. Then we define material properties of the slab and column like diameter of the longitudinal reinforcement and concrete strength. Finally, we'll do the punching shear verification without shear reinforcement according to Eurocode 2. If the slab doesn't verify without shear reinforcement, then we'll have to add reinforcement and have to verify punching shear with shear reinforcement. But that's a topic for another video. Let me know in the comments below if you want a video for that. We are showing all calculation steps for a simplified reinforced concrete slab that is supported by walls and columns. In this tutorial we will verify shear for the slab above the center column. We start with step 1, defining the geometry properties of the slab and column. The slab and the column have the geometric properties you can see in this table. Step 2, applying the characteristic and design loads. First, we need to figure out the characteristic area loads like dead and life load. Calculating the loads that act on the slab isn't topic of this video, but I'll leave a link to a free structural design cheat sheet in the video description. In it, you'll find all formulas to calculate wind, snow, dead and life load. After you have calculated the loads with the cheat sheet, we then apply these loads to the slab. Now, the most accurate way to calculate the reaction force of the column is to set up an FE model or finite element model. Another way and good approximation is to use continuous beam formulas if the supports from columns and walls aren't too irregular. Now, calculating the reaction forces of a flat slab is not topic of this video and I won't show how to calculate them. But I'll leave a link in the description below for a blog post where I explain how to calculate the reaction forces with continuous beam formulas. We'll verify punching shear for a column reaction force of 1093 kN. In step 3 we'll define the concrete and reinforcement properties. The slab has a concrete strength of C30 which has these properties. And the longitudinal reinforcement of the slab has the following properties. Step 4. Now we'll carry out the punching shear verification without shear reinforcement. According to Eurocode, three checks have to be carried out. The first check, at the parameter of the loaded area, which is the column parameter, the maximum shear resistance stress should not be exceeded. Check number two, punching shear reinforcement is not required if the shear stress does not exceed the punching shear resistance without punching reinforcement along the control section. Check three, if the shear stress is greater than the punching shear resistance, Without punching shear reinforcement, punching reinforcement must be added and verified. Let's start by calculating the effective depth of the longitudinal reinforcement by finding the depth of the reinforcement in x and y direction. The effective depth of the rebus in y direction is calculated as 215 mm and in x direction as 205 mm. This leads to an effective depth of 210 mm. Next, the shear force slash stress of the slab can be reduced with a beta factor. This beta factor is calculated with formulas 
39 to 46 of chapter 6 in Eurocode 2. If the columns are not used to stabilize the structure, approximate values for beta from figure 6.21n can be used. In our structure, there are shear walls and therefore the columns are not used as frame action to stabilize the structure. Therefore, we'll use the simplified values for beta. For the center column, Eurocode recommends a value of 1.15. The reduced shear stress is calculated as beta times shear force divided by u times the effective depth, where u is calculated as the perimeter of the column u0 for verification 1 and the perimeter of the column with a distance of 2d, d in this case is the effective depth, from all of its edges for verification number 2. The first check we'll do is the verification of punching shear at the column perimeter. The shear stress is calculated with the following parameters as 1.8 MPa and the shear resistance is calculated as 5.28 MPa. Now, calculating a utilization of 34% shows that the first check verifies. Next, we'll check if punching shear verifies without shear reinforcement. As a first step, we'll calculate the shear stress at the control perimeter U1 as 0.49 MPa. Next, we'll calculate punching shear resistance as 0.53 MPa. Eurocode 2 formula 6.47 wants us to check a minimum requirement that the design punching shear resistance is greater than new minimum, which verifies. Check. Finally, we'll check if the punching shear resistance is greater than the punching shear stress. The utilization is 93% which means that punching shear verifies for the flat slab without shear reinforcement.